honestly, the Warriors? Like, I, I know that they'll dual win, but I didn't expect it to be in North Queensland's backyard, Townsville. The Cowboys. Mm. Tamalolo. Yep. Tamo. Yep. Thurston. Yep. But what about the tactics? Beating the pulse. Who would have thought the tactic? Who actually knows the tactics beat the fourth pulse? Uh, it, was in, it, was in our, it was in our news. Oh, really? Yeah, it was, it was like one by one. Guy. Anyway, why back, don't we do something on it? Back to, the, back to the Warriors. Back to the Warriors. Do you know anything about Neville? No. No, neither do I. Back to the Warriors. Have they turned the corner? If we did a bit more. Ah, ah, have they turned the corner, man? If we did a bit more on the netball, have we might the, know a bit more about the netball. Have the Warriors turned the corner? Of course they have. Yes, they have. Yeah, they'll be well, beaten by the Tigers. Yes, they will. Yes. Yeah, then same problems will come out. Oh, how about the Tigers? Beating the Roosters, though. Mm. Who would have picked that? Well, the, tig no, the Tigers, are, the Roosters played the Broncos. Well, who did the, who did the Tigers? Do you play? stick to the ANZ Championship, was it mate? South? Did they oh. beat South? They beat a good team. I don't know. It was a confusing weekend of sport. You need to have Darcy on next after this. Here's the story of my odd weekend in sport, and it does involve the Blues and the Warriors as well. Watch the Blues on Saturday night, and as you probably worked out by now, if you didn't watch it, it was a particularly hard watch. As Super Rugby is becoming in this day and age, it's not the variant rules that we're dealing with and the crazy decisions by the refereeing staff, it's the complete and utter lack of skill from some of the players, and you can blame the rest all you want, but guys dropping balls and passing up and down left and right, it's, 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 it's a hard watch, but maybe it'll get better at the end of the season. And then the Warriors are on, the Warriors are on at 11 o'clock and I didn't watch the Warriors because I'm too old for that, you know, I thought I'll, I'll record it, I'll get it up, I'll watch it early in the morning with a nice cup of coffee. And my wife and I decided to go to the Stripe Cafe for breakfast over in Titarangi. It's a gorgeous place in South Titarangi Road. And I walked in the door and it was uh, quarter to eight in the morning. So there's nobody in there except one massive character in the corner of the room. He's actually by the sandpit with his young son. He's the same age as my daughter, Ava, as it goes. So the two kids started playing together and I said, G'day Michael, how are you? He goes, hi Darcy, how are you going? Don't want to drop names, but I'm going to. It was of course the all-black legend, the great Michael Jones. And Michael Jones stood up to shake my hand. He's a very polite, well-mannered man from out west. And he goes, Darcy, what a great night of sport. First Auckland, then the Warriors manager win. And of course, all the colour went out of my face because I hadn't seen it. I had it on tape. I was going to watch it when I got home for my coffee at Stripe. And I went, ha. And he goes, I shouldn't have told you that, should I, Darcy? I said, no, it's okay. You know, it's okay. It happens all the time. You know, don't worry about it. I had it on tape. I'm going to go home and watch it anyway. That's fine. <laughs> and then I went and sat down and had a wee cry by myself with my wife. And she said, who was that who just told you the score? And I said, that's Michael Jones. Quite frankly, he could wreck me here right now. He could kick me in the nads and drop me to the floor. And I'd still be very thankful for it and shake him by the hand because it's Michael Jones. Penalty. What is it about Super Rugby? Is it the refereeing, is it the rules, or is it the players breaking them? But you can't get two minutes into a game that <laughs> Penalty! Every single infringement, every single breakdown. And then of course when you get to kick a penalty, I mean it takes about an hour, doesn't it? There was 22 penalties in that game between the Blues and the... <laughs> Cheaters. There were 21 between the Lions and the Reds. There were 13 penalties kicked when the Highlanders played the Hurricanes. Is this really what people want to see? Do you actually go to a game or watch a game because all you want to see is the referee blowing the whistle? You know, and look, it's a holistic thing, isn't it? I don't think you can blame just one particular thing. But hey, referees, rules, and rule makers. It's such a shame. But between you all, you reckon what used to be a good game. I'm absolutely ropeable after the weekend. We saw no common sense at all. You've got a rugby player suspended, not for games, but for weeks below the minimum threshold. He should have been gone for two games, Elby Matthewson. He's going to miss none because his team has a bye this weekend. Get it out of here. Fissiar, he knocked the ball on. Apparently, now it hit his knee. What the hell was going on? By the way, Warriors, you did pretty well to win that particular game. Guys going upstairs to talk to a video referee, ignoring the evidence, and then giving a ridiculous decision, and then Sir John Kerwin, oh well, that's life. Where was he saying that over the last couple of weeks? And just on top of all of that, you've got an NRL coach who was prepared to put a guy back out onto the field when he retrieved him from Wonderland along with Alice, but had already been ruled out. Where's the logic? Where's the sense? Just as well, it's only a game, eh? And the force! Who do they be? The Chiefs. The Chiefs. <laughs> the Chiefs suck.